So uh, we were talking about convection, right? And we said that now in this um, section of the course, we are going to focus on convection only. So we revised conduction. Now we are going to focus on convection. Then we are going to blend both of them uh, to study heat exchangers. And uh, we will focus at the end of this course on radiation. Okay, uh, so we said that now it is time for us to learn how to calculate the convective heat transfer coefficients, the H values, right? Because typically up to now, I just gave you that value as a constant, but now you need to uh, determine that uh, value that is pretty important because we use it in Newton's cooling law, right? To obtain the heat transfer rate by convection. Um, we then said that the H value depends heavily on fluid mechanics, right? On the geometry and the regime of the fluid. So then we start doing a brief revision of what you learn in your fluid mechanics course. And we went through the Reynolds number, right? We went through what else? Uh, velocity boundary layer, thermal boundary layer. Um, that is the slide I have in here. Uh, we went also through very important dimensionless parameters, such as the nozzle number. All these dimensionless numbers you're already revising your fluid mechanics course. Actually, most of fluid mechanics book contain this big table, right? That summarizes most important uh, dimensionless numbers. Um, however, it is important that you recall that a dimensionless number is not only a quantity that doesn't have dimensions, right? is a number that help us to compare different phenomena happening in one process. So which we can decide which, which phenomena is overcoming one um, or is overcoming the other one. So we said that uh, the nozzle number becomes very important in convection, right? Because it provides us a measure of the convective heat transfer at the surface. We said that it looks like the biot number, but in the biot number, we use K for the solid or the thermal conductivity for the solid, where areas here, we will be using the K value or thermal conductivity for the fluid, right? Um, we also said that if we have um, a large number, we typically have large temperature gradients at the surface, meaning high heat transfer by convection. We also said that when we have very different temperatures uh, between the solid and the fluid, right, we need to calculate a film temperature to read the properties from tables, right? And it's what I have defined here at the end of this slide. So the thermal properties of fluids as a function of the temperature, then if the delta T between the surface and the free stream are very large, we get the film temperature, and then we read the properties with the film temperature, okay? Why? Because we are evaluating convection, that is a heat transfer between a solid surface and a fluid in contact with that solid surface, right? Another important dimensionless number in convection is the Prandt. And the Prandt help us to compare the ratio between kinematic viscosity in the numerator to thermal diffusivity in the denominator, okay? So physically, what it means the Prandt number? Physically is the ratio of the rate at which momentum is transported to the rate at which thermal energy is transported in the laminar boundary layer. Again, we are comparing two phenomena with the Prandt number. So for example, we have the first case when we have Prandt's number bigger than one. What is happening there? Where there, the rate of velocity of boundary layer growth exceeds that of the thermal boundary layer. That happens when we have Prandt numbers bigger than one. What if we have Prandt numbers less than one? Where in that case, the thermal boundary layer is growing faster than the velocity boundary layer. So as you can see, this Prandt number help us to compare those two phenomena, right? The thermal boundary layer versus the velocity boundary layer. That were two concepts that we, re we were reviewing that last class. And specifically, the velocity boundary layer is something that you went in a lot of detail during your uh, fluid mechanic course. So, so far we need to have three dimensionless numbers um, 
in mind, right, for convection, the Reynolds, the nozzle, and the Prandt. And it is the nozzle, the one that is going to help us to calculate the convective heat transfer coefficient at the end, as you will see in the next example. Okay, so let's keep going then. So we are going to study um, the friction and heat transfer analogy. And this analogy helps us to determine heat transfer coefficients, the H value, by taking measurements of the frictional shear force on a flat surface. So the shear stress and convective heat transfer at the surface are function of the velocity and temperature gradients respectively. Then we can establish two main relationships to calculate the friction coefficient and the nozzle that will help us finally to get these H values or convective heat transfer coefficient. And one of the relations is the Reynolds relation and the other one is the chilton colborne relation. So as we already um, said that we need to take measurements of the frictional shear force on the flat surface in order to determine this H value or convective heat transfer coefficient, let's recall the definition of uh, shear stress um, that, can, uh, that the shear stress at the surface can be defined by the friction coefficient, right? So we have this equation, and I'm pretty sure you use a lot this equation in fluid mechanics. Um, so the fluid friction and the convective heat transfer coefficient are related by this equation. That is the friction coefficient divided by two multiplied by the Reynolds equals the nozzle, okay? And um, then if we just play around with this definition and define the modified nozzle as the stanton, that is customary to do. So I'm going to then uh, apply the stanton definition to the Reynolds and Colborne analogy to solve for the heat transfer coefficient. So we replace as customary done the nozzle by a modified nozzle named the stanton. So I'm just replacing the nozzle by a modified number that we call the stanton uh, is what uh, we typically do. We have this relationship. The stanton equals convective heat transfer coefficient over density, free stream velocity, heat capacity equals the nozzle divided by the Reynolds times the plant. So out of this equation, we can have now the two analogies that are going to help us to solve uh, for the convective heat transfer coefficient if we can first determine the shear forces acting. And I told you the first one is the Reynolds relationship or analogy, and the second one is the chilton colborne analogy. So the Reynolds analogy help us to solve for problems when the plant equals one. And it, it can uh, help us to determine the heat transfer coefficient uh, with fluids when, again, the plant equals, equals one. If we want to extend this analogy, the Reynolds analogy, by adding the plant correction, we call it the chilton colborne analogy. So we are just multiplying, if you see the only difference between the Reynolds analogy and the chilton colborne analogy is that we are introducing the plant as a correction and this helps us to solve for wide ranges of the plant. Okay, so uh, it's typically used to determine the convective heat, trans heat transfer coefficient by determining the frictional shear force on a flat surface for laminar flow but it can give us good approximations by turbulent flow. So we can use it in both regimes, uh, laminar or turbulent, okay? Again, the Reynolds analogy, we use it when we have France equals one, and if not, we can use the chilton colborne analogy where we are just introducing the France as a correction and is valid for these ranges of the France. So these are the two equations you need to have in mind, guys the Reynolds for plant equal one and the Chilton Colborne just uh, correcting by the plant. Again, they help us to 
determine the convective heat transfer coefficient by measuring frictional shear force. And we can use, let, use them for laminar flow, and it can give us good approximations for turbulent flow also. So we have wind blowing across a building. We have a steady 15 miles per hour wind blows across the side of a building as shown in the figure below. One side of the building measuring 40 feet wide and 70 feet high experiences at convective heat loss of 300,000 BTU hour when the outside temperature is 30 Fahrenheit. If a shear force of 10 pound force acts on this side of the building, what is the building outside surface temperature? So we want to know the T wall, right? That's the question. What is the T wall? If we know the shear force, if we know the, um, the outside temperature, the heat loss, the measurements of the building, and uh, the speed um, of uh, the wind. And we said uh, we have also, sorry, the density, the CP, the prance, and the GC constant in English units to solve. So since this is your first, first problem with, uh, with um, the um, Chilton Colburn analogy. Um, so, how I know it, I'm going to use the Chilton Colburn analogy? That would be my first question. Uh, the, the answer is the Prandt is equal to 0 0.713, is within the range of the Chilton Colburn. Uh, remember that the Reynolds analogy we use it when the Prandt equals 1, right? And also we are given the shear force. Remember that when we can calculate the convective heat transfer coefficient from the shear force, we use either one of the analogies, right? The, the Reynolds or the Chilton Colburn. And in this case, we narrow our options to Chilton Colburn because of the Prandt. So that is the equation we are going to use. So I put my data here again. Uh, you have all the data in the problem given, the free stream, the uh, speed, the force, the dimensions of the building, the heat loss, the density, the CP, the brand, and the GC um, conversion factor. So I'm going to recall Newton's schooling law because I'm dealing with convection. So Newton's schooling law is heat transfer by convection equals convective heat transfer coefficient times the area times T wall minus T surrounding, right? Or the delta T. If I get the area of the building from the measurements given, I have 2,800 feet square. So I have given also the heat loss. I don't know age. I know the area. I don't know T wall. And I know the T surrounding. So I have two unknowns. So I'm going to solve age with the Chilton Colburn analogy because I know the shear forces and my Prandt number uh, allow me to do that. So I'm going to first solve using Chilton Colburn analogy, the H. Once I have the H, I will come back to this equation to Newton's cooling law and get the temperature of the wall of the building. That is the uh, main question this problem requires, right? So let's uh, the, let's then use our analogy. And we recall the shear stress definition, right? Force divided by area. And this is something you, I, I'm sure you solved thousands of problems in fluid mechanics with this definition. Then uh, knowing the shear stress, I can get the friction coefficient, right? And I get a friction coefficient of 0 0.006. I have already the friction coefficient, so we can just uh, use the analogy. So that's, I think, maybe the most complicated part of the problem. Um, after that, um, it becomes only applying the analogy, getting the H uh, value or the convective heat transfer coefficient, and after having H or the convective heat transfer coefficient, using Newton's cooling law to get the T wall. So I recall that the Stanton equals convective heat transfer coefficient density for stream velocity, CP, right? And I have rho, I have the free stream velocity, and I have the CP. So I put everything in this number. 
right? And then I recall the, the Colborne analogy because the prompt equals 0.713 and allow us to use the Colborne analogy. The Colborne analogy said uh, friction coefficient divided by two equals the Stanton times the prompt to the two thirds. I know the Stanton is given by this equation that I just, um, just manipulate here on the top of this slide, right? So I plug my Stanton here in the Chilton Colborne. So I have the friction coefficient that we calculate from the shear force in the previous slide. So divided by two times the Stanton, that we define the Stanton as H over uh, this number that I got from the rho um, free stream velocity CP times the prime to the two thirds. So I have only H as unknown or the convective heat transfer coefficient, so I'm just going to get it. And I get an H value of 5.65 BTU hour feet square ranking. Um, then we go back to Newton's cooling law that we defined at the start of this problem, right? And we know everything because we get the H out of the chilton colborne analogy. We are just missing T wall, right? So then I just get T wall out of Newton's cooling law and I get a temperature of 48.9 Celsius. So again, these two analogies help us to get the H or convective heat transfer coefficient when we can measure, right, the shear force or the free shear coefficient that they are interrelated one to the other. So this is, um, again, uh, don't forget that we use the Reynolds when the prompt equals one and the Chilton Colborne when we have prompts different to one, right? Um, so that help us only to correct uh, to correct here with the prompt. So let's keep focusing then on external convection. Um, so remember we divide convection into external and in internal depending on where the fluid is flowing, right? If the fluid is flowing outside the surface is external. If it is um, flowing inside a surface, like inside a pipe, like we have um, enclosed completely the fluid um, by a solid surface is internal. So for now we are focusing on external. And we are going to cover uh, different geometries uh, in external force convection, such as plates, spheres, and cylinders that are the common geometries we evaluate also for conduction. In the case of cylinders, we are going to explore circular cylinders and non-circular cylinders. Uh, cylinders that can have different cross-sectional shapes, right? Like a square or hexagon. And we are going to study also tube banks that are uh, arrangements of, tu of tubes. So 2D arrangements of tubes. That is typically the arrangements we face uh, when dealing with uh, heat exchangers. So it's very important to evaluate those then. So as I already mentioned, uh, we're focusing in external convection. Uh, that is the transfer of thermal energy between a solid surface and a fluid that is forced over the surface by a pump or a, or a fan. And we can have different flow regimes. How to determine the flow regime? Using the Reynolds number, right? And we can divide our regimes in three, laminar, transitional, and turbulent. And we have here in this pink square, uh, the ranges to decide where one flow can consider uh, either laminar, transitional, or turbulent. Um, again, um, if you consult different books, uh, maybe these numbers may vary a little bit, a little bit depending on the author. Um, so essentially what I'm going to teach you during external force convection is to use this table. It's table 6.6. .6. And you need to be very familiar for this with this table, okay? This table give us the heat transfer correlations for external flow, okay? So as you can see, these, uh, these nozzle correlations or heat transfer correlations, because remember the nozzle gave us that information, uh, depend on the geometry and on the flow condition. So you have here, several different geometries, such as a sphere, 
short cylinder, circular cylinder, non-circular cylinder, long cylinder, a sphere in a gas, a sphere in a metal, log flat plate, and this table extend pages in your textbook, okay? So essentially, how we use this table, and you are going to see it once we start solving problems. We define our geometry, right? That is going to be given in the problem for sure. Then we get our flow condition, either laminar, transitional, or turbulent. Then we decide which nozzle correlation to apply because with that nozzle, we can get the convective heat transfer coefficient or the H value that then we can apply to Newton's cooling law and get the heat transfer rate by convection. Very important to mention at this point, this table, um, this table uh, doesn't have all the equations that are covered during the chapter. So it's kind of incomplete table. So I will be solving problems here with you in the class with equations that might not be in this table but are in the chapter. So when, that, when the time arrives, I will ask you to write that equation in your table so you complete the table by hand, okay? So again, there are several equations along the chapter that are not in this table, and I try to include them in my problems so you can then complete the table. So uh, let's focus then first on plates for convection of flat plates. And this in real life happen in glass flow over turbine blades, airflow over aircraft surfaces, water flow across ship hulls, airflow over circuit boards, and airflow across buildings. So let's start um, learning how to use our table for plates. So we have air at zero Celsius and one atmosphere that is flowing at a velocity of six meters per second across a rectangular plate that is maintained at a uniform temperature of 120 Celsius, as shown in the figure below. If the dimension of the plate perpendicular to the flow is 2.5, so everything is here in the figure, right? Find the convective heat transfer coefficient, so the H, and the convective heat transfer from the plate. So the H, and then use that H in Newton's cooling law so we can get the convective heat transfer, right? So we have all this data given. Um, the first step, what would be the first step? We know the geometry, right? It's a plate. What else we need to, solve, to read our table? We said that the nozzles in the table depends on two things, the geometry and the flow region, right? How do we determine the flow region then? With the Reynolds, that's correct. So then uh, let's get the Reynolds to see which kind of flow we have. Then we can go to the table and decide which nozzle we can, um, we can use for approximate the convective heat transfer coefficient. So first of all, since we are dealing with convection, we are going to evaluate the air properties at field temperature, right? That is the average between the wall and the surroundings, right? We said that we are going to do that. That's a very common thing to do in convection. So the T wall is 120 plus zero divided by two gives me 60 Celsius or 333 Kelvin. So I'm going to go then to read the properties at the field temperature, the air properties at the field temperature. And I have the viscosity, the K value, and the Prandt. So I have then the properties needed to get the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number in this case, since we are dealing with a plate, is based on the length of the plate x equals l, l equals one meter. So I'm going to get my Reynolds number for that plate. I, I have the free stream velocity that is six meters per second times one divided by the kinematic viscosity I read at the film temperature for the air. So I have a Reynolds number that is less than 5.5, 10 to the five, sorry. So the flow is laminar. 
So now I know the two conditions to select my nozzle equation. I know that I'm dealing with a plate and I know that my flow is laminar because my Reynolds is 3.12, 10 to the five. Then I'm going to use this equation and that you need to add this equation to your table. So please add it. Um, or do add the equations or what you can do is if you don't want to write in your book, just in your note sheet for exam two, okay? But in exam two, you have to deal with two main tables, external and internal convection tables. So don't mix them, okay? Some will be for nozzles for external, some will be for nozzles for internal. Now we are focusing on external. Once we finish external convection, we will move to internal convection because we need to know both. Because in a heat exchanger, we have one fluid inside the tubes and another fluid outside the tube. So both convections become important, okay? So write this equation, the nozzle, for this case, for a plate glass, gas of flow parallel to the plate is 0.664 Reynolds to the half run to the one third. For Reynolds less than five, 10 to the five is valid this correlation. <clears throat> so let's get the nozzle then. So the nozzle is 0.664 times the Reynolds. I calculate in here to the one half times the prank that I read from the table to the one third. And I have a nozzle of 329.6. Now that I have the nozzle, I just can get the H value or the convective heat transfer coefficient out of the nozzle definition that we revised in previous slides when we were revising the nozzle, the brand and the Reynolds. So H or convective heat transfer coefficient is the nozzle times the thermal conductivity that I read, right, from my table at the field temperature for the air, divided by the characteristic length of a plate, that is the length, right? So I get an H value of 9.46 watt meter square per Kelvin. I have the H value, now I can directly apply Newton's cooling law to get the heat transfer rate by convection. So heat transfer rate by convection is the convective heat transfer coefficient I just got times the area of convection times T hot minus T cold. That gives me to 838 watts. So again, we first need to identify pretty clearly what is the geometry we are dealing with. Then define the flow type laminar, transitional, or turbulent. After that, go to our table and choose the best nozzle correlation that applies to our case. You will see later in this course that there will be several nozzle correlations that can apply. And actually one of the problems uh, we will be solving here in class would be to compare different nozzle correlations and you will see that they give approximations within range. Okay, why? Because of several authors, we tend to come up with our new equation, right? Better than the other one, <laughs> put the name to that correlation, right? And at the end, you get very similar, very similar numbers. So yeah, you will see that later in this course that there, are, they might be several nozzle correlations that can apply and they can give us, um, uh, results within range. Uh, we said we are going to evaluate the spheres also in external convection. And um, typically, a spherical bodies in cross flow found, can be found in many applications, such as molten metal drops, nose regions of aircraft, and underwater vehicles. And this is uh, how it looks as feeding cross flow. And as you can see, we have here very nice laminae and we have here some kind of pressure change that gives this wake uh, or turbulence awakened. So very important to have in mind at this point, we are evaluating the external surface, right? So then a feeding cross flow will exhibit similar boundary layer as a cylinder in cross flow, okay? 
Mm, we need to recall the drag force um, because we are dealing with fluids on top of a solid surface. And this equation of the drag force um, also is a concept you evaluated in fluid mechanics. And the drag force exerted on a sphere in cross flow is given by this equation, that is the drag coefficient times density free spin velocity squared projected frontal area of the body divided by two. That for a sphere, that projectile frontal area of the body is P uh, d squared over four. Uh, as you remember, if you have a slow motion or creeping flow, you can apply the Stokes law to the, get the drag coefficient, right? Because you need the drag coefficient to determine the drag force, right? And what is the Stokes law? It's 25 over the Reynolds. It's a function of the Reynolds for slow motion creeping flow. If you have high Reynolds number, how you can get then the drag coefficient that you need again to determine the drag force? Why we are evaluating the drag force equation? Because we are dealing with fluids on top of solid, of solid surfaces. So drag force become important. Uh, if you have very high Reynolds number, then you determine this drag coefficient from figure 6.6 .6 in your textbook. So again, low Reynolds number, creeping flow, use Stokes law for the drag coefficient, Reynolds over 24 over the Reynolds. And if um, you have high Reynolds number, you can use six point, figure 6.6 .6 in your textbook. Then let's see uh, how to evaluate the nozzles then for spheres in cross flow. So the nozzle number provides a measure of the convective heat transfer coefficient of the surface. And we defined that in the previous slide. So we can use this nozzle correlation that covers um, a wide range of Reynolds and Brands to get the convective heat transfer coefficient out of the nozzles. Uh, very important, this new S is the dynamic viscosity that is based on the wall of the temperature surface. And all the properties are based on the free stream temperature, not the film temperature, okay? Why? Because the person that developed this equation established it like that. It's an engineering equation. Remember that engineering equations tell us at what condition evaluate properties. Okay, so very important when using this equation, all the properties in this equation are based on the free stream temperature, not the film temperature. And you don't have to take note of this equation, you have it in your table, so don't worry about that, it's here. Table 6.6, six, a sphere in gas or liquid. This is the equation and it tells us the ranges of France and Reynolds we can use to apply this equation of a sphere and gas or liquid. The only thing this table is missing is not marking that the properties are evaluated at the free stream and not the film, okay? But it's within the chapter. So if you want to make a little note here, in this equation, evaluate at the free stream and not the film. 